Okay, at, at this point I hope you download, download it, all the files and uh, let's uh, launch Fluent. So my base, you, you have the workbench now, so you can launch the workbench or the stand alone version of Fluent. My base to use the stand alone version, okay? Uh, so I will launch a standalone version of Fluent. So remember to put here your working directory, whatever you extract those files, you, you, you will put it here, number of processors, 3D uh, uh, and double precision. I don't see any reason not to use double precision, okay? The only thing here is that you will consume more memory, but my, you might get that a little bit extra accuracy. Uh, okay, so just the launch standalone, I already have it here. And in our workflow, in our cases that we have, let's first run the quartz runs, okay? So this is the clean case. We just have there the case at top. So I will go, I will open. Uh, cases, my runs case. Okay, so we have the mesh, okay? Reading here, here everything has been set up for you, okay? Even the boundary condition, the period one. Probably in a later, later tutorial, we'll show you how to set up this mesh, all the conditions, if you want to use the, uh, the file, the automatic setup file. So we have this everything defined. So look at that, the mesh is a perfect mesh. So remember when we are addressing the, the theory, I mentioned that this kind of scale resolving methods, they, they rely on very good meshes, uh, very good quality meshes, and it's a it's either cells. So the only thing that you can see here that it seems to be a little bit of uh, this stretch in here, a little bit, the cell seems to be a little bit large. We're going to to see how to set the quality, but it's true. And this is why we are not resolving well the, the stretch. And in the fine mesh, it is uh, divided by two, this one, so you can resolve better. So let's explore here where we'll wall flow. So we go general, steady will be the first solution. The method, feel free to choose any method. I will choose the standard 1K Omega SST with production limiter, okay? Nothing else to define here. Materials. Remember that we're using water liquid. As you go back to the slides, uh, uh, so I should have. Let me go back here, and so in the description description here, you have the working fluid water. Okay. So, and the uh, values of velocity that you need. So you will need to adjust that a little bit. So I have done everything already for you. So if you go water liquid, so you put density and the viscosity level uh, value. Okay, everything compressible. So boundary conditions, then let's explore here. So we have an inlet. So we have the value as the one defined Okay, in the in the description, but also the experiment as you go back to the page here, you, you will go probably these two papers, the two first that you have all the information as the experiment. And this value is also, you know how to choose this one, but if I would recall, I chose this one just to reproduce the experiment. Uh, nothing else to do here. Then we have the outlet. It's just a simple pressure outlet. Tut and button, remember that these are walls, but they are slip, slip walls. So as you go here to define a slit wall, you go here, specify shear and put it zero, zero, zero. And means that you have there, uh, you have no boundary layer there. So we also in the theory address this, the roughness. And as you want later, you can run and see the influence of roughness. Uh, then we have the square, which is another wall, but in this one, yes, it is, a. Uh, no slip, so see that we have no slip defined. And then you will have the back and front, these two page uh, uh, surface boundaries. In this case, we already created, so we collapse those two surfaces. And here also is important, you see translational uh, periodicity, and also we have the boundary conditions. And it's important here that you need to define here the flow direction in this when you in this boundary condition. So here we have the flow, the periodicity, 
in this date action you define it there okay so nothing to 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 define pressure gradient zero so this will would have uh, no influence there so we keep moving we have this uh, reference values so you have the reference values to compute all your forces everything and it's important sometimes is some people use the turbulence intensity just to make it clear so here we're computing all the forces but also if you are if you were not computing forces uh you will need to set this velocity value just for the uh turbulence intensity remember that turbulence intensity you get the rms divided the string free, uh, free string values this is the value you get to compute that and some other quantities that are normalized but in any case these are the values to compute forces and everything and pressure coefficients and and so on so let's go for method and the first method that we're going to use is the couple so we're going to play with two methods okay we're going to use the couple the fully couple and then the segregated solvers so we have a numerics that is second order we say that this method for steady simulation is the best method it might be a little bit expensive from the point of view of the computational effort but it will convert very fast to steady solutions we're going to see that in here uh methods nothing to set up here in controls okay then we go report definitions remember to set up all the reports so here is steady we just are computing initially cd cl leaf and drag and y plus i put here just y plus maximum but also you will need to compute y plus average so let me show you how to add that monitor also so you go into surface if uh, average so you want to compute that only in the square. Let me call it y plus average. And I want to just report the plot and that's all. Dun -dun, everything okay. And you have it there, okay? So we have the two monitors. Uh, residuals, let's use these values are okay. Then report files are saving all this information to output files so in your working directory in this case we open everything here runs we're going to have all these files there in your working directory so every output file you will have it there the plots we are going to add a converged condition okay so we're mon monitoring cd we have work in this so when cd is not os oscillating anymore it will stop uh cell register we have seen that we can use this one for adaptive mesh refinement we're going not to do we're not going to do anything of that and then we go initialization okay so we compute values okay for an inlet so meaning that i using the values that i given at the inlet to initialize everything so you press initialization and now we have initial conditions okay so remember every now and then save so i will put here and i will call the first one couple and we have that already a case ready to run see that also to so go graphics I already created also a few cut planes here you have lines where we can do sampling velocity probes so when we move to SRS, we need this prof to sa to save velocity and then you want to, to plot the turbulence spectrum and everything. And here are some planes, so we can already have been pretty fine. Something interesting, uh, important that also is you go to param uh, here in parameters and customization, custom field. I already predefined this one, also these two functions. We saw that in the theory also, alt zero, uh, L zero, which is integral length and scale. So record for the slides, the lectures that we compute it like this. And then we have RL, the refinement ratio. This one is the one that is going to tell if we are solving that turbulence spectrum, okay? Uh, is the, sorry, is the mesh is good enough to resolve the integral length, length scales? Uh, so we have that defined. If you want to define something else, also feel free to add it. So having this, let's run this case uh okay before running also okay let me plot here so see that we have a uniform solution okay and uh, no, i want to see this one velocity outer range we have a uniform uh solution 
and I want to use the full multigrid uh, initialization. Remain, initialization is very important. If you put a uh, good initialization, you are going to converge faster. Okay, so let me do and let me run with the uniform uh, solution, and then we do the non uniform. For, but for you, just go right ahead and use the, the full multigrid solution. Okay, let me run here. It might be a little bit uh, fast, and let's see how long it takes. So see that, okay, it's just launching all your quantities that you're monitoring. And uh, well, I make a mistake here. I didn't put the monitor for the, for the, for the Y plus. I, I left it for the uh, average pressure. So let me stop here and fix that. Uh, just to show you also that that doesn't require you to to start from scratch so you can go here and report definition it was this one so i i forgot to define here turbulence and it should be y plus or y star is up to you so you can check compute okay okay so now it has been updated And let's wait a little bit, okay, and see the output. Okay, so the simulation arrives to a converged solution. So see that both monitors converge. My residuals and the monitor that we put in CD, and it arrived very fast, relatively about uh. 80 iterations it, it arrived to, to the converged solution. So you can explore here your Y plus maximum is something about 30. You have the average also. Okay. I need to update it. I didn't update it. Uh, then we have uh, leave drag all your signals here. Okay. The forces and the coefficients. So let's rerun the case. But now let's use the non uniform solution. Okay, so before also let's visualize a little bit the solution. So see that this is the solution we have. Actually, I arrived to a converged solution. And what is interesting, look at what is happening here that here we know that we have a, a wake here, the set of a wake, but the solver is just not predicting that. Okay, the coupled solver is arriving to, to this, this solution. This doesn't mean it's wrong, it, it is right, but it is a solution, okay? So let's change now and let's rerun, but using uh, a non-uniform initialization, uh, uh, the full multigrid. So let me let let me initialize again, okay? So we go to zero. By the way, see that here we have uh, you no know, state wall. So in the initialization, probably you will see here that you have boundary layer, but then when it runs, you, you don't have that effect anymore. Uh, so remember that you go to solve in your text user interface. Then in this uh, 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 initialization, and we you we use here if and ye, okay, yes, and it will run a fast. Let's say initialization there, iterate fast, and now if I go here, we have this is initialization. Okay, so this is much much better than a non-uniform initialization. Uh, let me fix the problem with the report definition. Uh, report plus should be this one. So here, okay, I should remove. I should have the average value. This one, okay. So you can update it like this. So if you want to add something else to that plot, so let me add also y plus mag maximum. Sorry, I have it there. So these two, I'm plotting those in the same plot. Okay, so let me launch again. Okay, so remember, previously it was about 80 iteration. Now we have this initialization. Let's see if we get any speed up. So we have some output file. It's just asking you that if you want to create new files, if you don't want to overwrite what, whatever you have in that folder. So see that in your working folder, you have the output text file. So you can <coughs> use a decent text processor editor. So I use this one, Sublime Tabs, which is free in Windows. And you have your files there. So let's say that I want to know because I want to overwrite. Yes. And now it will overwrite. So 
Starting from that condition, it will start to iterate and see that here we are plotting the two. So you have maximum and the average. So let's see how many iterations it takes in this case now. Okay, in my case, I arrived to a converse solution. So see that now it was bus monitors arrived to a converse about 74, which is faster. You can see that it's faster than the previous one. Might not be not much, but in some cases it will be, you will feel the difference. Okay, so see that we have all the monitors. Okay, so we have Y plus average. Uh, maximum is about 30. The average, let's say about 10. Probably it's not the desirable value, but if we know both functions, they do a good treatment. And your coefficients, everything here. And let's take a look again at the new solution. Pretty much the same, okay? So we didn't have much any influence in your final solution, in the, let's say, qualitative uh, solution, but in your converge rate, it was a, a different. So we have that one we play around with this solver and let's save this one again co we call it couple and now just to remind you how to save the interpolation file so see that we have write you go sorry file interpolation and you go here and you can write in this uh cell songs because you have you can have more complicated cases you you, you can have different cell songs and you will what we like to to save everything there and you give it a name that we call it inter couple okay because now we're going to to run use another solver and we save the file okay so as you go to your working case you will see here that you have your interpolation file so see that everything that you're doing is being so saved in your working director so now this interpolation file can be used as a starting condition to another uh to work in another me different mesh or different case using the same mesh. So now let's do something. Let's again initialize zero initialization and let's do the only modification that we are going to do is the change in the solver. Okay, so recall that this one is converging like in 70 iteration very fast. And let's go to the simple, simple solver. Okay. This is the other family. These are the segregated solvers. So and let's use the default parameters. Okay, so as you go here, everything is alive. So just to make things faster, if you already have a previous solution, okay, why not using that? So just to use that previous solution, you go into interpolate, read inter and interpolate, and I want to read that data that we just saved. It. You see here, read, and the data was interpolated, and we have that solution to use in our new solver. So this one, in this case, we did it in the same mesh. You can do it with different meshes, even different domains. It will interpolate where you have cells that are matching, where, where it is possible to, to pass the solution. So we have, <clears throat> we have this and we can run, but before running, let's do something else just to show you. Remember that also that we have initialization and notion that we can perturbate the field. Okay, so let's do something. And let me see the, when you go into solve initialize, you have this and you can add perturbations to, to, to your initialization. So as you go in turbel, okay, that will add fluctuations. And basically this is what you have now. So this is even better because you have a fluctuation that can have an influence on in your solution. So let's do something that pre before running the simple, let's rerun using the couple again, just to see if it is an influence, if we will again arrive to the same solution that is fully steady, or maybe we are going to find another mode. Okay, so again, let me run here, calculate. And also, just to make it clear, remember that you all can also compute a statistic for uh, a steady solution. So enable this one, then you were, you are going to, to, to gather your statistic. Okay, feel free to do that one. For the moment, for the time being, I will disable that one. I will just save some computational resources and calculate. So let's see again, same, same, same question. No, okay, overwrite everything. 
and let's wait a little bit so let's see a couple okay okay so let's see what we have now we're starting from this condition okay we arrived to a convert solution in test and now that see that now it was much much faster than the the previous one okay but see that we have initial transit and then whatever was happening there was damp very fast okay so if we plot again see that we have this pretty much is the same so we don't see any influence in this in this solver so our next step let's do again and go back to this setup simple okay so this is another family of solver okay it's also robust but generally speaking they have a slower convergence rate but the uh computational overhead is much less than the couple so you monitor the couple you will see that couples use a lot of memory uh so let's run for using this one so you can go and you can initialize again or you can restart from the solution there is okay the, 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 the it's not compulsory to proceed that like i was doing previously that interpolated okay you can restart from this solution and actually i will do that so in this solution i will add a now a perturbation okay so i have that field that is let's see what we have okay see that the field is perturbated and starting from here okay without initializing from zero okay i will go and i will keep computing using a new solver uh you we are going to see a jump in the residuals okay but nothing bad okay we will expect that one that, that is something a normal behavior and uh, let's see what we have now okay so also pay attention that these are our residual uh, our quantitative of interest so uh, i'm converting like this and let's see what we're going to have now okay i press so we see that jump and let's see what we have now with this simple family solver so something that you might notice Right, right away is that the cost per iteration is lower it's much faster and as you start to monitor memory you also will realize that they use memory and in terms of maybe look at that we are now seeing some oscillations okay so probably we need to let it run but see that for instance leaf it's not flattening like in the couple so this is what i say i uh, want to tell you that doesn't mean that the couple is wrong or the simple is wrong Buses then, as they have different pneumatics, probably the couple, as it putting all those equations together, it will reach that steady state faster and probably it will reach a solution. Okay, instead in the simple as segregated solving equations one after the other, it doesn't reach that steady state that the couple is reaching. However, the physics that you are going to see in this in the segregated, it might mirror better what in reality we're expecting in reality we're expecting some vortex shedding okay but in theory neither of those solvers are, are, are wrong or right okay remember in this case we have vortex shedding so the ideal solver would be on a, on a steady solver okay so we're running this one getting initial solutions and we're going to see what uh, uh what happened using different solvers different initializations that we're going to see so let's wait a little bit and see how progress the the residuals and then we are going to move into a qualitative post-processing and evaluate the integral lens scales and uh, re refinement uh, criterion Okay, so let me stop after 850 iterations, kind of minus the previous one that we had using the couple solver. So just to show you this behavior is clearly, we have a very different behavior from this that you see here, the one that it was the couple solver. Now the simple is capturing a different physics. So it's just telling this is not run. It's just telling you that you have uh, unsteady behavior, okay? So you have the leaf and drag forces. And if you visualize here, you will see that you have some shedding. So this is an advice. Sometimes it's 
can be a good idea. Just first start using quartz mesh in your problem and then probably switch solver. So the couple is very fast. So run with the couple and if you get to a solution, then switch to the simple and run few iterations to see if there is some different behavior. Okay, so I will stop this one here. I will save this case again. Uh, we'll call it simple now. And I would uh, save another interpolation file. Okay, so see that now we have our another interpolation file. It's right, very different to the one from the couple that we can use in some other meshes and quartz meshes. Call it simple. So now we're going to post process the integral lens scales and the refinement ratios. Just to recall this from the lectures, so we can compute the integral lens scale if we are using the RANS models that we have these two quantities available. So we can compute it in this way. Okay, so this one is going to tell you know the largest vortices in your domain and why do do you have those the wake and where things are happening. So see that for instance in this case the Hammett body that we already did. See that you put your integral lens scales and you have it there. So this gives you a reference, but however, we have some vortices there, okay? So also, uh, so the question is, is my mesh good enough to resolve those vortices? What is, is there a criterion to, to, to determine that? <clears throat> so we have this criterion called the rate of integral lens scales to grid scale. So we relate LCO that we, we just computed with the dimension of the local cell. Okay, and in, in <coughs> generally speaking, if this value is less than five, we are going to see how to compute it. <coughs> it means that your mesh still requires more refinement, okay, to resolve those scales in a proper way. So how to compute RL is just this ratio, L0 delta, which represents the mesh, okay, in uh, grid lens scale. And <clears throat> this one will kind of be the smallest cell that uh, edge in your cell. <clears throat> this is sometimes, sometimes can be a little bit tricky to compute. You have that information available in Fluent, but it's tricky. So you can approximate that like, like this. In this case, we're taking the cubic root of the cell volume, but you can imagine that you can compute in any way. So if you have a perfect uh, uniform mesh, this will be very, a very good approximation. If you have tetra meshes, it might not be very good. So in tetra meshes, you might be you you might use the faces, or you can compute some other criterions like the spheres, describing that pyramid or triangle. Okay, so there are many cr uh, criterions, criteria. Uh, but I have to say that uh, this one works very fine. And remember, after all, at the end, this will be a rough uh, approximation. Okay, so I think this is this work very fine. So <clears throat> this number RL should be larger than five. Okay, and ideally something about ten to resolve well those integral lens scales. Okay, so the absolute minimum is five. Okay, and then everything above five is something that you are gaining. Okay, you are gaining more accuracy, better resolution. But we know that you are going to have larger, larger measures. Uh, for accurate lens simulations, okay, uh, the integral lens scale must be sufficient resolve. Therefore, this recommended to have a value of ten. Okay, so we're going to, to work work it out. So we have runs, old runs, and VLES, three, three to five is acceptable. Let's say let's put the upper limit, uh, the, the lowest limit, in, or the highest limit, let's say, in five for these simulations, okay? So <clears throat> what, what we are computing basically is this. So to resolve, we're saying that to resolve a vortex, we need at least five cells. This pretty much makes sense. You want to resolve it like this. And as you put 10, <coughs> you will get better better resolution and see that everything is determined it's something locally okay but, but, but your cell length and then the smallest uh, vortex okay you will compute it like this it's l the smallest scale and delta will be equal to l half so to resolve a small one you will need to put at least two cells okay so this will be our criteria uh, criteria these two to resolve vortices, the large, large one and small one. So you see that the more you put, the better your resolution, the finer your mesh. So this is what we have. We're resolving here where energy peaks 
remember also we, here always we need a good resolution and here we start the energy transfer boom up to the smallest scales and then you will have let's say a cut off a cut off grid, grid scale and from this point here and on you will model everything in scale resolve simulations in RAN, so RAN, so everything is being modeled so from where we get this number of, of five or ten so first it made sense to say five but then there there, there, there are some also <clears throat> some experimental words and based on dns so basically you can construct this plot <clears throat> the cumulative turbulent kinetic energy against lens scales and you get something like this so you can say that for instance you go here and you say for instance if i want to solve 90 percent of my turbulent kinetic energy spectrum you have here you will need to to have a ratio about 0 0.16 okay so you need to go here okay for instance you want to get 0 0.8 you need to have 0 0.42 so this is cumulative you are accumulating all your energies you go closer to the closer that you are to one the more uh the better your resolution okay so this is based in experiments and dna simulation you have uh, some uh, reference here you go to to pulp and you will have a better explanation but also there are a few papers that explain this so basically look at that we define l also as delta Two is you put L here and then you take the reciprocal, you will you will get this ratio L0 delta. So see that as you put here to resolve 80%, it's telling you that you need something about five cells. But ideally you want to be closer to 10. <clears throat> and from here, from where this number is coming. And see that pretty much is telling you that is you want to resolve just 10% of that spectrum, you will need well, it's telling you just one cell, so it's too, it will be too, too, too diffusive, it's probably unacceptable to resolve integral lens, lens scale with, with one cell. It is not acceptable, it's your 150, it's telling you that no, two, so that's why I'm, I'm putting, I'm telling you just to put uh, a, a limit on five. That is the absolute minimum is the one good resolution, okay, which kind of will, will tell you 80%. So what you are going to get when you plot those quantities is something like that. So you, if you don't show the values above five, everything that you see means areas that require refinement. So this is the is back step, the back step that we did as, uh, as well. And see that here where you have the recirculation is telling you that you need more refinement. So then when you refine your mesh, see that everything is well resolved. So these areas, okay, will require more refinement, but in general, it's working like this. At the walls, by the way, you will use Y plus. This, is, this criterion is just good for the core of the flow, okay, where you have those vortices, okay, those larger scales. The smallest scales at the wall where this dissipation is happening, you will need to use Y plus or Y star to to measure those so now that we know what were uh, what were those quantities let's visualize so remember that we computed let me show you again here you have in custom field let me manage and we compute uh l0 see here that we have it here and then rl we compute it like this and those two quantities are available for us so if you go custom field functions you will have it there so see that l0 and here's where you have or your integral lens scales, okay, the largest vortices. So it's telling you that I have something very large there. By the way, see that is the, the, the in this case using the simple. What we're going to see is uh, that for every iteration we're going to have different behavior. Okay, this is local but also iterative. Every position or different uh, weight configuration that you are going to have, you are going to have different uh, values of L0 and RL. And if I plot RL, <coughs> it's showing me these values and see that I let me go out of range and let put, let's put put the limits from 0 to 5. Click to range means that everything above 5, it will be clipped, means that those regions above 5 are the regions where you have in theory a large resolution, a good resolution. So the largest vortices, see here, it's telling you that that is okay, but in general, this mesh is not okay for this case. It's not resolving properly or your larger scales, okay? So see that probably the much larger, yes, 
but then this change in time, but this is not okay. What you would like to see is that all this region is that not visible, meaning that all your wake is well, well resolved. Okay. And if we, if I plot the mesh there, okay, let me go back. I want to plot the mesh, just this tree display. That basically all the, all our problems would be due to this stretching. Okay, so as we increase that stretch, as we're going to see you now, we are going to get a better better re resolution. So now we have that, and let's do something. We computed for this simple case. Now let's go back to Pimple. Oh, uh, yes, yes, sorry, I was thinking about some, some other solver. Uh, let's go back to Couple, and let's see what happened with the, the Couple now that we have this behavior and let's see what rl we're going to see if we go back to that steady behavior let's see what integral scales and grid refinement ratio we are going to see so don't do anything just change to couple and run again and let's wait a little bit to see what happened here so in our case, arrived to convergence in a few iterations. So see what happened for a highly unsteady uh, state. Look at that, the couple solver dumps re really fast, everything, so let me go here. And then we get, again, the steady, the steady solution. So this is the main difference. You will see couples are very efficient. In a few iterations, it will converge to a steady state instead. Uh, Segregated solvers are more sensitive to unsteadiness and sometimes might not converge. And in this case, doesn't doesn't it doesn't mean that the segregated is wrong. Probably the segregated is gi gi giving a more realistic uh, behavior. But in some cases, where you might have a steady solution, the simples will take the simple will take much longer to get to that solution. So let's plot integral length scales in this case. And auto range. Okay, so we have this. So let's plot first velocity just to see. See that we have our field as we were having. And then as you go integral length scales, here's where you have the largest vortex. It seems that like kind of a an average of the of the uh, let's say oscillating solution. Now as I put RL auto range and I want to see from zero to five. So in this case, it's telling me that it might be resolving well, but we know that this is oscillating. We are we don't see the fluctuations here. Okay, we are not seeing any fluctuating quantity. So velocity, as we plot, for instance, in y. So that we don't have any fluctuation there. Even if you compute the statistics, you will get the RMS and it will tell you that there are no fluctuations. So this is why it's always a good idea. Couple and then simple. Couple you reach fast some solution, state solution, then switch to a simple to see if you have, you can capture some oscillation if it can uh, trigger some oscillations. So uh, we have this, the two solution, we save the two files, okay, the two interpolations that we're going to now to use in a finer mesh. So just to show you, so let's open now, uh, you go read um, case. So if you go uh, instead of quartz folder, you go to find and go to runs, read that case. Okay, so immediately see that this mesh is, is finer in that direction, spans wide direction, and let's interpolate the solution, okay, the quartz. So as you go interpolate, read, look for your file, whatever you have it. So I have it here in quartz, runs, and let's use the simple, okay, I want to use the simple. And this you plot here. Oh, 
we have the solution and now using this we can go and iterate in this new mesh so let's run first let's okay now let's start from the simple okay let's go simple i use this one and let's run live probably 500 iterations and let's see what we we have now with this new mesh okay so let's do a few iterations Okay, so after about uh, 360 iterations, 350, look at our residual behaviors. And if you look at CD, look at that we have all the oscillations in the steadiness and CL, all the signals. Okay, so let's go here. If we plot velocity, okay, we have our plot in the finer mesh. And well, remember every now and then just save everything so call it simple there so we have a solution there we can go also and write down the data okay so save this inter simple and you can look everything here no q criterion La later we're going to plot no q criterion vorticity everything but let's take a look at the l0 rl so this is installed you know it's state simulation they're inexpensive of course but it's also so we check everything that we have it working here that we can pay we, we, we can do many simulations inexpensive and then when we move to srs we know that we're doing things right so you are here See the integral land scales, as you recall the other, there might be some, some differences in the other case was we'll, we'll something much larger. And if I plot RL, I already see some difference in the maximum value, but and see that now this one it's it's much better, okay? So see that now here it's telling you that is everything is, is resolved here. There are some areas that might not be working fine but again you you get the idea that we get we went to a final mesh and now we we have a better resolution so it might be that probably we might might add another refinement level in this region but look at that what is telling because if you have the geometry you know that this is the region the critical region where it's starting from the mesh that you have okay let me uh, pa, pa, pa. Okay, so starting from, from this mesh, you can uh, start to do some refinement. So see here that maybe it would be better to make another refinement in this direction, in the X direction. The Y seems to be okay. So you see that this criterion, uh, criterion is gi giving you a lot of information. Uh, so... Uh, Density is constant. We have pressure also. Okay, this select there, and see that also an indication of vortices are low pressure area. So you have vortices, vortices here, vortices here. But we know that we have the Q criterion. So let's plot the vertical structures using Q criterion. So that when you go in results, create isosurfaces. Okay, and I want in my domain. The Q criteria is located in velocity in Fluent 2020 and all those older version, I think it is in turbulence. Choose here Q criterion create. Okay, let me change now. So it's a positive value there. You are going to play with the range. So in this case, 100 will be okay. So just create another one. And you can visualize there again here contours. And you will you should have it somewhere here. Okay, Q criterion 30 display. And here you have your vertical structures. Okay. So you can reduce and you go back here. 30. And let me change from that. Let me go to 10. Save compute and replot. And see that we have the structures there okay so again this is on a steady version so you we don't see very clearly all the shading like in the presentation like in here K 
okay so this is fully uh, on a steady okay even we should get something similar to this in the in the orders okay but this is the first step you see that it was kind of a very inexpensive uh, it was inexpensive and we have an idea of the quality of the mesh so here let's conclude something the quartz mesh is a good one to get the initial condition okay but when we put there the 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 good the, the criteria that uh, criteria that we're using for for to assess the goodness of the mesh is not good enough and then we have the fine mesh that is much better okay it can be better but it's already much better we see a big improvement okay so our next step that what we have here we have the interpolation file for quartz and fine then we're going to move to the on steady solver the urans okay then we're going to capture some time signals before stopping here let's do something also let's get the interpolation file for the couple solver and the uh fine mesh so you go into methods change here to couple and let's launch this one and again should be something fast Okay, but interesting, look at that, the cost per iteration is much, much higher. You'll realize that probably like five or six times is lower than the simple. Okay, so let's wait for this solution and then we move to the next part. Okay, so look at behavior of the couple solver. So see that very fast it went to this steady solution, okay. And CLCD stabilize kind of stabilize about the main value of the sample okay not necessarily what it looks like for instance here it's kind of quite different so if we we, we, we check here the rl okay we have pressure so our interior land scales and then we go rl and outer branch and as you recall the previous mesh, you will see that this probably the it's much better okay the rl limits let me erase this one it were up to eight i will recall or 10 look at here that we have larger okay it's telling me that we have much much better resolution in, in, in many areas and the integral length scales well pretty much the same should be okay so this is our couple solver so let's write this case also so we have a starting point here couple and let's write also the interpolation file Okay, so just to, uh, to summarize this case, we study couple and simple solvers in a quartz mesh. We save the interpolation file. We saw that the difference. Also, we move to the finer mesh and we interpolate the solution from the quartz to the finer. Okay, so these are basic steps that you will need always to do when before running SRS simulations. Okay, then you compute the uh, integral lens scale, use the RL criterion to assess the goodness of the mesh. And based on the lens scales, then you have all the, some other criteria for the mesh, but this mesh, as you can see, same is hexahedral. Also remember to plot your Y plus on the surface. Okay, so in this case, we are below, so SRS is also recommended to be below 100. So here in general, generally speaking, it's a very good value maybe we have a large percentage in the buffer area the one that we try to avoid but let's say that in this case not a problem so see that's well resolved on the surface so as you put 30 to 10. okay so you will use uh the Y plus at the walls and the RL in the core of the flow. Okay, so let me hide a little bit more. Okay, so what we don't see here is above 20, then we have some green. So we have many salts in the 10 to 15, so not, not very desirable. But wall functions, is so we know what they, what they are doing. Fluent so have a robust implementation, but let's say it should be better to have something or below 
below 10 or above, above 30, okay? So if you have your geometry, you have the dimensions, you can get a, a better mesh. So now let's move to the unesthetic case. And that's all for this tutorial.